everybody. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm sad that our doors are closed back there. Megan, is there any way we could open them up, or is that just because they're breaking down the party? Do you like this? It's so pretty. <laughs> it is, we have to take advantage of the beautiful things that happen to us yes. when they do. And I live in San Francisco now. I moved from Oakland oh. to San Francisco. Oh. I know, right? I'm totally with you. <laughs> I'm with you 100%. So save your response until the end. <laughs> I was not the plan. I love the East Bay, but I'm getting married and he lives in San Francisco. So that's fine. <laughs> and like, he owns and I rent. So like, you do that, right? Um, uh, but my point is, um, it's colder in San Francisco. <laughs> I don't like it as much. Uh, so I'm just sort of wanting to enjoy the beautiful weather. Uh, enough about me. Um, this, these two people who often are linked together in all of our marketing materials are two separate individuals who have their own career, wonderful career paths and their own aesthetics, but get to link up uh, whenever they can, and fortunately we get to have them. Um, Patricia McGregor, uh, the director of Winner's Tale, and Paloma McGregor, who is a choreographer handling all the movement for the piece. It's more complicated than saying that she just does the dances. She incorporates her movement into the work and they'll talk a little bit about that. Um, I will uh, uh, open this up to them in a second. I'll just give you a quick, I, 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 uh, as you all, uh, many of you saw a spunk that the two of them made with uh, uh, many of the same cast members who are in Winter's Tale last year. I met Patricia uh, maybe four years ago, I think, when she was uh, a third year student at Yale Drama School, where I had gone, and I was being asked to speak to the students and share my wisdom. <laughs> As to, uh, and um, she gave me, she like took me on. Uh, she like questioned me on a lot of what I was saying. And uh, so I uh, didn't like her at all. <laughs> and immediately in my head thought, well, that's one director I don't <laughs> Lucky me. And then I saw her that night at the uh, sort of the campus, the, the drama school bar. And she's, she came up to me and she said, that was such a great conversation. I hope we didn't put you too much on the spot. You really were taking it on. It was really wonderful. And ever since then, we've become friends. And, uh, and uh, and has, uh, she has informed my uh, aesthetic as a director and one as a producer and community leader. Um, and has Paloma uh, as well, um, whom I've gotten to know better this time around because we all share the nuptial uh, uh, in common. Uh, Paloma just got married and Patricia's about to get married. So uh, we are about we to get married. <laughs> Okay, so enough about that. So uh, uh, this is uh, uh, was the first play I fell in love with um, of Shakespeare's uh, when I worked for Joe Pat in the '80s, and I was his assistant, and he had started to do 36 plays with 36 stars, and uh, um, it's called the Shakespeare Marathon, and this was one of the productions that he had done, and um, uh, it was the one I fell most in love with uh, for uh, I think a lot of reasons that are that are mine. Um, and I would like to um, uh, offer up that question for the two of you. Uh, do you share in that love? And if so, what is your particular love? And has it, you know, has it like snapshot of today, that question? Uh, well, I'll start by saying. Could you speak up here. Oh, yes. Oh, I'll start by saying, saying yes, I went internal. I went very I, someone's going to yell at you. I don't like that. But I'm ready to be external. <laughs> One of the things I love, well, I'll start by saying this. Um, can you just raise your hand if you've ever been in love? <laughs> okay. You are. Now, now, raise your hand. <laughs> raise, okay, thank now, you, thank you. Raise your hand if you've ever done something that you feel you want forgiveness for. <laughs> and, and, and raise your hand if you've ever been in a moment that strikes you with awe and or wonder. It could be Edward. Yes. Okay. So, this play contains all of those things. And one of the things I love about this play is people say it's a problem play. People, you know, I read all the time about the chaos of the problem play and the business. And to me, it is a play about 
about the truth of life. That it is not just one thing. I am not living a comedy or a tragedy. I am living life that involves comedy and tragedy. I am living life that involves open-hearted vulnerability and first love and new love and things that I feel wretched about and have to, have to find ways to work through and reconcile. Um, living uh, about a year and a half ago, or about two years ago, our father came to live with us. Um, he's 87 now. Um, and one of the things I remember him saying is, you know, after all of this time, you realize that life is much simpler and more complicated than you think. It is not one thing or the other. None of us are. Anyone could look at any of you and say, oh, I'm going to describe that they're comedy or tragedy. I'm going to describe, we're actually all of that. And I, I love that Winter's Tale allows for all of that. Um, I also love that it is a play that in the end is hopeful in the face of very hard things. I, I often say that I'm an unrelenting optimist and it's not because life has always been easy. It's because I believe that despite difficulties, despite personal or outside world or whatever those difficulties are, hope springs eternal. That even, even though we see collateral damage, that we have to, I know no other way. Or it's not a way that I want to live. I don't want to live believing that we things happen and then we can't somehow find another way forward. And I think, I love that this piece shows a world that is, that seems like it has everything that it wants, and yet something goes awry, even in a world like that. And when Leontes' jealousy or sickness or whatever you want to say about it, when that consumes him, and starts to topple an entire world that's actually a pretty stable world, we go, oh, at least for me, I understand that. I understand someone talking in a rehearsal room and I might think they're talking about me, and then I go down the rabbit hole. So I love that this is a play where we see someone go down the rabbit hole, <coughs> and we see that there's a cost for going down the rabbit hole. Winter's Tale, it's a warning tale, it's like an old wives' warning tale, and yet there is hope at the end. So I, I just, Love that journey. <laughs> right, you, you captured on this idea of a, of a tale, and you compare that, say, to the, the Grimm fairy, Grimm's fairy tales, yeah. uh, where they, they play the warning out and then leave the kids to suffer through yes. it <laughs> all night uh, to not to behave. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, he, he goes somewhere different with that. Yeah. And we'll talk about that in a second. I wanted to open that same prompt to you. I feel like what I've grown to love about this work is something that I think I love about dance. Um, I've long said that the reason I'm a dancer is because you can't lie as a dancer. <laughs> you know, I mean, you, there's, you, you can't pretend to be doing something. You have to do it or not do it. Um, and this play feels like it shows us what people do when they're in a tense or pressure-filled situation, which is often when, I won't say our true selves, but is often when parts of ourselves that under the great and, and easy circumstances don't come out. Like we are able to sort of mask some parts of ourselves when things are easy, when there's not a lot of the pressure. And I feel as though the circumstances that unfold allow us to witness a series of characters having different responses to the same sort of pressure. And it allows us to then see mirrors. When I'm in the rehearsal room, watching these characters live out the truth, their truth inside this play, I feel as though they are also holding mirrors to parts of myself that maybe under the most ideal circumstances I'm able to mask, but don't know what would come up under the pressure of the circumstances they find themselves in, and I feel like that's a really important lesson. And so I feel really grateful for having to spend time with this play, um, even just for myself, to grapple as a person with, um, with these choices that people are being called upon to make, and hope that we are able to enliven those choices for audiences so that everybody leaves kind of feeling a little 
both a little more sense of this idea that one can dip down into a low place and come back out, but it's not, it's not as though you come back out in the high of, of celebration. There has been a loss there at the end of the play. You do see hope and redemption, but you also see the reality that, that the circumstances that spiral in this play um, leave us with. And I think that it really helps us to reflect on our current circumstances and things that we might individually go through in our lives or that we see unfolding in the world around us. Beautifully put. 